uh, amateur drawing. I think it's something like that, but it's sort of even here. Uh, well, we'll just say it's a lampstand. A menorah is a lampstand. I don't know if you've seen like the Jewish people still have it, yeah, in their synagogues. Ah, good. That is the menorah. That is in the holies, where the people sit in the church. That is there. What else is there? Is the showbread, which is a table of 12 breads. And then there is the gold altar. You're baptized in the, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Your eyes are opened for the holy baptism. You become the child of God. You enter the house of your daddy. You enter the house of your daddy, you'll find the menorah. You'll, have, you'll find the shoe bread, or they call it the bread of faces. The manna. That it was that God gave to the Israelites in the wilderness. Now, manna is a, is a and Sayyidina can correct me if I'm wrong, it is a Suryaya uh, language, which means mannu hu. See, when the Israelites saw this thing coming from heaven, they didn't say, what is this? They said, who is this? Mannu hu. Because they saw a face of a man in that bread. So manna is an Aramaic or a Suryaya language, meaning mannu hu. Who is this? Not what is this. So they saw the face. So there is the table. The showbread is the bread of the faces. The face of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said in John chapter 6, I am the manna, the bread, living bread that descended from heaven. Who eats me shall live in me forever. So, when the Israelites in the Old Testament said, Who is this? Mannu who? In the New Testament he came and he says, Inna nahu. I am. Who is this? Jesus answered in the end of times. He says, I am that I am. Yahweh. Jehovah means I am. I just am. So that bread represents the Lord Jesus. And then there is a gold altar. When you are accepted by the Lord Jesus, He opens your eyes first to start living the presence of the Lord Jesus. Enjoying His presence, tasting His love. What is going to happen? You will be illuminated by the menorah. Illumination, you'll be enlightened by this lampstand. You will start seeing your way much more clearly. A clearer once you start really offering yourself to Jesus. The more you let go of yourself, the more you will start seeing things much clearer. Piece of advice, which we all fail with, by the way. When we go through an obstacle, and it may be a severe one, we focus on the problem. We don't focus on the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus said to the disciples, uh, go across this, uh, the Tiberias Sea. He stayed praying. And then there was a big cyclone, and a big, you know, you, you've read this story. Oh, you've heard it. So the Lord Jesus came in the very last minute, and... Uh, Simon said, oh, is that you, Lord? If it's you, really, then, then tell me that I, uh, I want to come and walk on the water just like you, you are walking on the water. He said, yeah, Simon, you can do it. Come on. So when Simon was focused on the Lord Jesus, he came and he started really walking. But then um, he got a little bit sort of worried. He said, I just want to see how big the wave is that's coming from this side and this side. So he took his, his eyesight from the Lord and he looked at the wave and he started sinking. He looked at the problem. He stopped focusing on the Lord Jesus. Now, this big wave is the problem, but Jesus was walking on the waves. So all your problems are under His feet. So when you go through a problem, don't look at the problem, because if you, if you look at it, it's very big. You can't do much about it. But if you look at it with the eyes of Christ, offer it to Jesus, and say, Lord, I can't do it. I think I'm going to die, but I have faith that You will deliver me. And all of a sudden, you will see that your little boat has made it to, to the shores, and you are saved. So the more you learn, practice makes perfect. Try it, and you will find how wonderful and mighty Jesus is in your difficulties, 
and in the dark moments of your life. You can't pray. It's, you don't feel it. You, you, are, you, you, you don't have that energy to pray. But force yourself, even if it's a little word, even if it's a little heartbeat that's still sparking for the Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, I'm drowning. Please come quickly. He will come. Trust in the Lord. Give yourself to Him, and you will see how He works in your life. So that illumination is the menorah. Now, very quickly, the menorah is, I mean, this drawing is hopeless, so forgive me, is made out of, of a um, knob, flour, and almond blossoms. So there's three things in each head. So there's one in the middle, the stand in the middle, and three branches from the right and three branches from the left. So how many branches do we have altogether? Seven. Each branch, these three here and these three here, each branch holds three knobs, three flowers, and three almond blossoms. And same here. So three on each one. Of, of each one. Three of this, three of this, three of this. So how many are there in this one stand? How many becomes? If we have three of each in each stand? Nine. Nine. Okay. Nine times six. How many? Fifty-four. Fifty-four? Okay. The middle stand, the middle stand, instead of three of each, has four of each. So four of the knobs, four of the flowers, and four of the almond blossoms. So how many of that does that make it? Sorry, I'm taking it to... Uh, Kindergarten or, you know, you won. 12? So 54 and 12, how many? And these are the chapters of the Holy Bible from the Genesis to the book of Revelation. 66 chapters, there, but there are some differences in other, other books. But what the Lord is saying, that this menorah is a representation of my word, which is the light for your path and for your way. If you walk in my way, you were on the outside, you offered yourself for me. I gave you the illumination of the Holy Gospel. I gave you my living word as the menorah that enlightens your life, your path, your inner being. And when you are enlightened by my word, that means when you are led by my word, you will see the showbread table which holds 12 breads. And the showbread table, we said, is the bread of the faces, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. You will enter His house, and in His house, what are you going to hear? The Holy Gospel. What are you going to receive? The body of the Lord Jesus and His blood, which is the twelve, the table of twelve showbreads, which is Himself. So you are receiving the Holy Communion, and you are receiving the Holy Gospel. Yes? Why do we not um, have it in our churches? In... The menorah? Because the menorah was only symbolic for the actual Jesus Christ when He comes in the end of times. So when Jesus came, that symbol, you don't need it anymore. Just like the lamb when it was sacrificed like an animal, which is symbolic for the true lamb of God. So when the true lamb of God came, you don't need to sacrifice lambs anymore, do you? So that was it symbolic. But the Jewish, unfortunately, they still haven't believed in the Messiah. That's why they're still waiting for Him. So they still got it. A symbol of the Word of God, which is an illumination for your life and for your path. Yeah? Alright, so you receive the Holy Communion. And uh, so when Jesus leads you into His house, He enlightens you with His Word. He strengthens you with His body and blood. There's only one thing, and one thing only you're going to do for Him. Is that offer Him on the golden altar your praises and thanksgiving. See, the altar that was outside of the outer court was brass. But the altar inside is a gold. And the golden altar is representation of your praises and thanksgiving for the Lord Jesus. You know, I make a mistake, I commit a crime, a sin, and then I'm embarrassed about it, I'm ashamed of it. I come to the Lord Jesus, I come to His house and say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin, please forgive me. And you find that the Lord Jesus so easily forgives you and embraces you in His, in His bosoms again. What can you do for a person like that, that loves you so much, 
no matter how bad you've been, but He accepts you and corrects your sins and washes it away. You can only thank Him. What can you do for a person that helps you when you are in need and, and, and in bad, difficult moment? All he can say, thank you, thank you, God bless you. Isn't it? So it's a praise of thanksgiving on the golden altar. Um, and then, when you start reading the Holy Bible, and you familiarize yourself with it, it start teaches you. It starts building you up spiritually, everything. You are being built up in the life of Christ. The body and the blood sustains you in the life of Christ. And then your praises for Him lifts you even further up and takes you all the way to the altar. Now the altar, there is the Ark of the Covenant, which has the golden manna in it. It's, uh, the Ark of the Covenant is, um, is like a, how do I explain it, like a box. And had two, uh, two cherubs on it, like two angels uh, on it, uh, facing each other and with their wings touching each other. So, and, and the top of that ark was called the mercy seat. Anyway, there's too many information. I don't want to sort of, you know, give you a headache with it. But that ark of the covenant, which is literally the Lord Jesus himself. It's the altar. It is his tomb. Uh, it's his, his grave, if you want to call it, his presence there. So in that Ark of the Covenant, there were three things. The, the golden manna, a, a representation of that bread that came from heaven, which he said, I am the, bre the, the bread that descended from heaven. And there was the, um, the tablets of the Ten Commandments in there. And there was the rod of Aaron, which blossomed. So there was the rod of Aaron, there was the, uh, the Twelve Commandments of Moses in there, and there was the golden manna, a representation, a symbol of that manna that came from heaven. In there. So, in Jesus Christ, you'll find the. Um, now, let me um, go back to my um, notes again. Um, and again, the um, the bread uh, or the manna is a representation of this is my body and blood where did he where, how did he give that body and blood for us on the on the cross now the cross which mountain was in this Moriah whereabouts was it middle middle one Zion so what Zion was purification so the body and the blood is to purify me now the the um, the the Ten Commandments which he gave which is the Word of God is What's the word of God to me? Is salvation. And the rod of, the, of Aaron which blossomed is the Holy Spirit working in you to bring out fruit. I am a dry wood, but when I receive the Holy Spirit in me, I become alive and fruitful. So, I receive the word of God as salvation for me. I receive the body and the blood as purification for me, and I receive the rod which blossomed the Holy Spirit working in me to be fruitful for the Lord Jesus. Now, is there any questions? Have I lost you? Any questions at all? Nothing? Was it clear or was it very confusing? <laughs> Maybe it's confusing? Okay. I just want to say one thing. Um, well, let us just recap before I say these few words here. So we said the outer court is what? The brass altar and the tank of water. And that is, I'm offering myself, my weaknesses to the Lord Jesus, to purify me and wash me clean and open my eyes. And when my eyes are open, I enter the house. I'm illuminated by the Holy Gospel. The Word of God starts opening the inner person of me. It enlightens me up, and then His body and blood sustains me when I fall, puts me back on my feet again, and then when He is with me, 